On the buzz meter this Sunday, Donald Trump in a wide-ranging interview unloads on the mainstream media. They don't want to cover me accurately. I see such dishonesty. They have a couple of sites like Politico. It's totally dishonest. They will say things that are unbelievably wrong, purposely. Talks about his Republican rivals. Marco has had tremendous problems with his credit card. What I'm saying is he has not handled his financial affairs very well. And key campaign issues as well. But the New York Times insists he's wearing out his welcome with the media. Is that true? Just two days to the first Democratic debate, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders insist they won't attack each other. I like Hillary Clinton and I respect Hillary Clinton. I know Bernie. I respect his enthusiastic and intense uh, advocacy of his ideas. All that respect drained the drama from the CNN face-off. And lots of breathless media chatter about the Democrat who won't be in there. Joe's in. Joe's out. Joe Biden's leaking to the press. Is this feverish speculation out of control? Plus, how virtually all the pundits were wrong about Kevin McCarthy becoming House Speaker, and some outlets are peddling trashy rumors. Here comes Kevin McCarthy. Looks like he'll be the next speaker. Kevin McCarthy is really in the prime position to lock this up. He is heavy, the heavy favorite right now. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy sending shockwaves through Washington. This is a huge shock. This is a bombshell that nobody saw coming. This is not anything that I ever thought I was going to report to you. Shocking. I'm Howard Kurtz, and this is Media Buzz. It's been three months since I sat down with Donald Trump, and he's obviously outlasted the constant gloom and doom predictions by the pundits and dominated the coverage of this race. I spoke to the Republican frontrunner at Trump Tower. Donald Trump, welcome. Thank you. You say again and again that most political journalists, not all, most political journalists are dishonest in the way they cover you. Why? Why do you think that is? Well, there's great dishonesty in the media, and I didn't see it to the same extent with the financial media. You know, I've only been a politician now for three months, but they don't want to cover me accurately. I see such dishonesty. They have a couple of sites like Politico. It's totally dishonest. I mean, it's it's unbelievably In dishonest. fact, you tweeted about Politico the yeah. other day. I wonder why somebody doesn't do something about the clowns at Politico and their totally dishonest reporting. Another tweet you call Politico pure scum. Why they are a language? very dishonest site. And I would say they're probably because they write things that are not true. They never even call us. I mean, they very rarely even call. They will say things that are unbelievably wrong purposely. Uh, they'll estimate the size of a crowd as being a tiny fraction because everything I do, I sell out. I mean, you know the crowds. You know them as well as I do. We had 20,000 people the other day in Oklahoma. We had 20,000 in Dallas. We had 35,000 people in Alabama. Do you Alabama. think that's deliberate? Oh, totally. Oh, totally, 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 totally. It's, it's not even a question. Now, somebody said they're a liberal site. I don't know if they are. Not. I know nothing about them. By the way, I know nothing about them. The good news, I hear they're losing a lot of money. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. But I just want to say, Politico is very dishonest. The Washington Post is very interesting because they've started to really capture my campaign. It's been very interesting. The Washington Post has, has been uh, Bob, you know, Cost is, is, yeah. is really very professional. Uh, I find the New York Times is very mixed. I have some that are fabulous. Maggie is great and Maggie a couple Haberman. of them are great. Let me and then you'll you get outliers that are just like, you know, where did those stories come from? Let me ask you about this New York Times story. It generated a lot of buzz. Donald Trump's bombast seems to be wearing out its welcome. It says the media are tiring of your outlandish behavior. Yeah, and you know the funny thing? The reporter wanted an interview and we were going to set it up at some time. You know, it's hard to do all these interviews. I could do interviews all day. And they've actually apologized for it. The reporter wants to do another story because it was a wrong story. Uh, we're getting much higher. Look, the reason you're interviewing me is because you're going to get higher ratings. I don't know why, but you're going to get higher ratings, much higher ratings, maybe double and triple by interviewing me as opposed to you're somebody else. That's true. Well, campaign. it may be, but even maybe without that. Uh, O'Reilly, the same thing. Greta, the same thing. Hannity, the same thing. I mean, they get much bigger ratings. And uh, they you, were saying you've they had, was, you've, let me jump in. You've yeah. had your go rounds with Fox News. You've also ripped on CNN occasionally. A lot of times it seems to have to do with polls. And so these and other organizations prefer polls that are based on random telephone surveys, which show you ahead. 
way ahead. Other, whole, other online polls, which we regard as less scientific, show you maybe even more ahead. So isn't that a legitimate disagreement as opposed to being unfair to you? Well, I'll give you an example. So NBC does a poll and CNN does a poll. I'm leading in both, but the NBC poll is better. I'm on NBC, the Today Show, and they show the CNN poll. I say, wait a minute, you people paid for a poll that's an NBC poll. But I believe and that yet was you an used... online survey. No, no, I don't know if it was yeah. or not. I know NBC did. I'm being interviewed by NBC. The poll just came out. I was leading. I was at 29 or 30, and I'm leading by a lot. And by the way, on CNN, I was leading by a lot, but it wasn't quite as good. And NBC used the CNN poll, and I said to him during the interview, not a lot of people are going to do this, I said, just out of curiosity, weren't you using the NBC? This is NBC, weren't you using your own poll? No, uh, I think the reporting, and at the same time, you have been great. There have been people, O'Reilly is tough as hell every time I do it, but he's great, he's fair. I don't mind, you know, somebody said thin skin or not thin skin. I don't mind it all being criticized if I deserve it, but you have a couple of people on Fox that are brutal and for no reason. I mean, really for no reason. Well, for so no reason, I found the conservative commentators may disagree with you ideologically, but let me ask you. Well, no, you that's what, different. I'm not even talking let about Let me it. ask you I was surprised when CNN's Don Lemon during an interview asked you, are you a homophobe? And he also said some people may perceive you as racist. Are those fair questions? I was not bothered by it. I said, absolutely, I'm not a racist. I said, you're more racist than I am, okay, looking at him. And actually, he was very fair. I found him to be very fair. I find him to be very fair. Uh, I find many of the people to be incredibly talented and generally fair. The people I don't find to be fair are the pundits. You know, anchors tend to like me. I don't know, maybe because they want me to go back on the show. The ones that are brutal are these pundits. They come from nowhere. And they have, but although I must say, many of them are coming around. You know, when I, when I started, first, nobody thought I was going to do it. Then after I did it, they said, oh, he'll never file. Then I filed, and then they, and, and you know, it went on we're like this. We're still getting that. But now, last yeah, time not I was so here, you were, you were kind of beaten up on a man you called Sleepy Eyes Chuck Todd. Since yeah. then, he turned a little bit more positive for your case. You've done me to press several times. So does your opinion of journalists rise if they like you? No, if they're fair. Uh, he's been very fair to me. I didn't think he was fair to me initially. Now, I was a novice. I'd never run for office before. It was three months. I've only been doing this for three months, okay? But for almost three months, I'm at the top, which is pretty cool when you think of it. You know, when they compare me with a man I like, Herman Cain, where they compare me with Michelle Bachman, who I also like, they were there for one, like one week. Yeah. I've been there from it's the beginning. Very, very it's different. been a long time. It's All been right. a long run. Let's, no, but, but Chuck build, Todd has been fair. Let's drill down on government spending. This is okay. a long question, so bear with me. The Conservative Tax Foundation says your tax cut plan would cost $10 trillion. I know you dispute that estimate. You said you don't want to touch Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Together, they're $1.7 trillion. That's half the federal budget. Now, I know you want to go after waste, fraud, and abuse, but if you slash taxes and you put half the budget as sacrosanct, likely blow a hole in the deficit. No, but we're going to build the country. We're going to take our jobs back from China. We're going to take our jobs back from Japan. I'm the only one that can do this. Other people have no clue. But Believe there me. is math involved No, no, here. there you is You also math. want to build up the military. You know how many jobs we have lost to other countries where they have ripped us like we're a bunch of babies? We're going to bring our jobs back. We're going to bring manufacturing back. We're going to bring... Look, with, as an example, Social Security, Medicare, you sign up for Social Security, that's a lifetime, you know, that's your contract. You've signed that contract. It's there. Now, if you can't do anything about it, but in my case, I can because I'm going to grow the economy to a level that nobody thought possible, and I'm going to bring all our jobs back. And but that's going to be the thing that grows the economy. To some extent, you're saying, trust me that I can do these things. Yeah, I don't think so. Because when you look so, at I... the hard numbers, as economists do, it is hard to have it all. Cut taxes, increase spending, protect spending for the big entitlement programs. Well, I think one of the reasons I'm doing well is I built a tremendous company. You know, I started off actually with a father who was great, but he was in Brooklyn, Queens. You grew up in Brooklyn or Queens, I think, Perfect. right? So you understand, it's a different kind of a world. A lot of people like to say, oh, my father was this massive real estate guy. He, it was this beautiful little small I company. I know the projects he okay. built, but are you saying very, that your success different in real estate automatically translates into being it, it able to does. tame the federal government? I took a tiny little beautiful little company started by my father, and I, I gained tremendous knowledge from my father because he was a great negotiator. And I built it into a massive company that's worldwide, and we sit here now on Fifth Avenue in the best location in the world, 57th and 5th, and I, I've done a good job. Now, without doing that good job, and it's part of it, without doing such a great job, and you saw my financial statements, they're 10 times better than anybody ever thought, but without doing that job, you wouldn't have the same credibility to say what I'm saying. I'm saying this, uh, I'm going to take jobs back from China and all of these countries that have ripped this country off. On this question of wealth, 
You've been counterpunching, as you would put it, against Marco Rubio. You say he criticized you first. One of the things that you've said about the senator is that he hasn't got much money. So is being a middle class guy trying no. to raise his kids as opposed no. to having your name on a building no. like this a disqualification no, for the president? It's not. But he's had tremendous you know, credit card problems. You know that. Marco has had tremendous problems with his credit card. He is very weak on immigration, illegal immigration. I mean, he's, as far as he's concerned, the Gang of Eight was a disaster. But you he was friends with Chuck Schumer and everybody. Not rich, no, uh, I'm not he's saying not it. In your I'm not saying it. What I'm saying is he has not handled his financial affairs very well. You look at his credit cards. You look at his problems. And I said he was a lightweight. But you have to remember this. He started with me. He was very nice. Then about two weeks ago, he started hitting me. I said, "What was this all about?" I didn't start with him. Here's the good thing. Everybody that's hit me so far has gone way down to the polls. It's a weird thing. On I hope that, that translates into running a country. On that point, you haven't spoken much lately about Jeb Bush. Is he no longer a threat to you in this race? No, I think he's a nice person. I, I went after him at the beginning because he went after me, but I went after him at the beginning. Uh, he's out there pitching. I mean, I can't tell you what's going to happen. Don't forget, when I started, I was never going to run, according to the pundits, and Jeb Bush had it made, Rand Paul had it made, and if you think about it, your governor of Wisconsin, Walker, who's a very nice guy also. He's gone. And he's gone. Okay. So they were the ones that were going to win, one of those three. And uh, it's not looking like that. A few weeks ago, you got into it with Ben Carson. He made what you called a nasty comment, questioning your faith. He later apologized for that. Lately, it seems like you have almost a mutual non-aggression pact with Ben Carson. No, it's not non-aggression. I like him. He's a nice man. Right. Now, but he, but that he's being said, running number two. I don't know that he's going to be the guy to negotiate with China, which I do all the time. By the way, the largest bank in the world from China is in this building right above us. They pay me a lot of rent. But I've made great deals with China. I own a big chunk of the Bank of America building in San Francisco, 1290 Avenue of the Americas. I got it all from China. I outdid them. So. Yeah, it's, you know, negotiating is a great art and a great talent, and it's something... So why are you questioning Carson's well, ability to I, look, I be president? I don't question anything. You know, I, I tell you, I respect him, and I like him a lot. And he made a statement about me, and he withdrew it immediately. He said he misspoke. He, he actually did. said the press convinced him to make that statement or talked him into it, and we know the press, right? He said it to me. Okay. Yeah. Was that the statement originally made to you? No, no. He, when I interviewed him, he said it was a mistake to take the reporter's it, question I thought it was very made, nice. and that he apologized. Honestly? That shows a great way. He, he was able to withdraw it. Oh, I was all set to go wild. Now I can't go wild. I'm actually saying, I wish he'd hit me. You Please hit me. sound frustrated. No, he's very smart. Right. He's got to hit me. Now, the New York Times tells me it's not aware of anyone apologizing to Trump over that piece on his supposedly dwindling media appeal, and editor Dean Baquet thinks it was a good and fair story. And Politico CEO Jim Vandehei said this about Trump's criticism. Our journalism and business performance are amazing, fabulous, total winners. We are making American journalism great again. More of the interview in a moment, but let me know what you think about the media coverage of Donald Trump and about our interview. At Howard Kurtz, send me a note on Twitter. When we come back, Donald Trump on Iraq. Just how early did he oppose the war? And later, with Kevin McCarthy bowing out of the speaker's race, some of the media are painting this as a Republican Armageddon. And later in the program, we'll show you what the Donald said about the coverage of his wife, Melania.